What's going on everyone welcome back to another video if you don't know who i am that means you're new i'm mark what's good with y'all go check out my other videos check them out check them out but first stay on this one so welcome back to another part of three handguns that are better for concealed carry than home defense and honestly one of these i'm super excited to talk about i'm not gonna lie to you guys i'm actually pretty excited to talk about the first i'm making it the first one too because why not all right so let's let's get right into it. So starting off, the Smith and Wesson MP Bodyguard 2.0. So some of y'all might be wondering, well, didn't you wanna, you know, either on part three or part two talk about the you know the MP bodyguards? Well, yeah, I did. However, that was prior to my knowledge of the MP Bodyguard 2.0. I when I did that video. The Bodyguard 2.0 has not been released. Uh, so, <laughs> when I saw this the, this new Bodyguard here, I definitely had to include it on the list here because it is not like either of the other Bodyguards that we know. So, for starters, why I believe it is much better for concealed carry than home defense, obviously, is going to have to do with its size. It pretty much is still a pocket gun. It is still that small. Now, some people might argue, oh, well, it's a tiny bit bigger than the original bodyguard. Yeah, but let me explain to you why that is. So, for being a tiny bit bigger than the original bodyguard, you get double the capacity. So, instead of 6 plus 1, you can either have a 10 plus 1 or a 12 plus 1. That's a big difference right there. With that capacity alone, obviously, it's not a revolver. Uh, it is a semi-auto, chambered in 380 ACP. Dude, this thing looks amazing, and I've heard almost nothing but great things about it. Uh, would I argue that it's good for home defense? Probably not. Uh, 380, uh, excuse me, 380 ACP is kind of anemic. Uh, is it a bad round? No, but you can get a 9mm. You can get a full-size 9mm for home defense, or you know that, that would be better for home defense that would be much better but <clears throat> regardless uh front and rear slide serrations that's always nice and they added in their new trigger smith and wesson's new or at least more updated trigger that they released a while ago it is one of the best triggers you can get on your firearm that's right out the box that's just how it is nowadays <laughs> like it is an amazing trigger uh, I saw somebody use one of those machines to test the weight of the trigger pull, and while it, it, the trigger pull is a tiny bit light for my liking, uh, I would like to test out the trigger pull myself, see if, you know, because I might get that gun. I don't know. But as I was saying, I saw them test out the trigger pull, and it was roughly around two and a half pounds, which that is an amazing trigger for a pocket gun. Uh, you're, you're going to be able to shoot that thing extremely fast and extremely reliable. And some of y'all might be wondering, well, you know, why would I want a pocket gun with that light of a trigger? Hey, if you're that hell bent on getting it and you know, you don't want to get like a Kydex holster for pocket carry. I'm sure there are some, uh, and you don't want to get a, a good holster that, you know, nothing's going to, you know, press that trigger. Don't have a round in the chamber. I don't know what to tell you. I don't advocate for not having a round in the chamber, so I would much rather tell you to just get a good holster for it if you really want to get that gun. Uh, but much better, obviously, for concealed carry than home defense, considering its size, its shootability. Uh, the capacity is okay, but the round it's chambered in. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't have either a it, it doesn't have an accessory rail of any kind. That's if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so overall, would I recommend it for home defense? No. Concealed carry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next. This one, some people are going to, you know, they're going to have their, their own opinions on. However, the Springfield Hellcat Pro. Uh, now, with a pretty good capacity, I'm not going to lie, you know, 15 plus one capacity. My biggest reason for why I don't recommend a, a Springfield Hellcat Pro for home defense and I would recommend it for concealed carry is simply due to its size. I'm sorry, but I, I will have to keep, you know, reiterating and, you know, just saying over and over again, 
in this series that when it comes to home defense, you have a chance to choose the best gun for yourself. The gun that you shoot the best, that will have the best capacity of the best caliber. Like, you get the upper hand in that sense. It's not like how it is with concealed carry where you just have to use what you have on you. You see what I mean? So why go to something as small as a Springfield Hellcat Pro? It doesn't make sense to me. It's not that the gun is a bad gun. I've actually heard almost nothing but good things about it. However, with how small it is, it's not going to be the easiest for you guys to shoot. It's going to, it's going to have snappy recoil. That's just what it is. That's how physics work. Like, it, I don't know how else to explain that to you guys. The smaller the gun is, the snappier the recoil is going to be. Meaning, the more uncomfortable it's going to be to shoot, you're not going to want to practice as much. Overall, would I recommend it for home defense? No. Uh, would I recommend it for concealed carry? Yes. And I know some people are like, well, why would you even recommend it if you think it's not going to be something that people want to train with? I never said that it's not going to be, I never said it's going to be something that people don't want to train with. What I'm more so saying is that if you had to choose for a home defense gun that you want to train with more, what are you going to pick? Glock 17 or Springfield Hellcat Pro? My point, concealed carry gun is a complete, it's, it's a complete different field. You understand that, hey, I need to practice with this gun still. However, it's not going to be the same size as what I would use for home defense. That's obvious. That goes without saying you're giving up size, capacity, and shootability for concealability. You see what I mean? So yeah, that that's why I would that's why I would put the Springfield Hellcat Pro on this list. <coughs> now moving on from number two, this one I just had to do. I just had to. Some of y'all, you know, you might sit there and comment and be like, "Oh yeah, you've been taking some easy way out, you know, final options for some of these recent ones." You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I I have to in a sense. You know, you'll hear why. And I want to recommend this just because I don't think this firearm is good for or necessarily good for really anything doesn't mean that it's that it wouldn't be worse for another application. And that's going to be the Trailblazer Life Card. Oh, my God. <laughs> for those of y'all who have been longtime fans of the channel, this is not my first time talking about the Life Card. Uh, it is not a great gun. Have I ever shot it? No. Do I ever want to shoot it? I don't know. I, I haven't really come to a final conclusion on that yet because uh, it, it, it just looks so not fun to shoot. For those of y'all who don't know what the Trailblazer Life Card is, it, it sounds exactly like what it is. It is a firearm that essentially can fold up and will mimic mimic the shape of a credit card of course it's nowhere near as thin as a credit card you would argue more so like maybe a, a tin of mints maybe uh but besides the point you get it is a, it is a single shot so you get one round of 22 lr and that's not very encouraging <laughs> to say the least if i'm going out and about and i'm worried that Okay, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I might be in danger here. Do you think I want to have to sit there, go into my pocket, pull out this plastic rectangle, press down a switch for it to flip open? Even if I already have a round loaded in there, I still have, I still have to cock it back. Because guess what, guys? From what I've seen, there's no safe way for you to pretty much have the life card ready to be deployed like that. There's no safe way for it to happen. So you have to cock it back still and then aim where there's no sights, I might add. Pretty much no sighting. And shoot. And you get one round of 22 lr out of a minuscule size barrel. Yeah, that's uh, not a great gun overall. I will say that right now. Now, <laughs> I know I'm talking down on this gun a lot. You guys can understand why. However, what I can say is 
out of the two situations, would I recommend the life card for home defense or concealed carry? Probably concealed carry, but not as a primary concealed carry weapon. Um, <laughs> if you use a trailblazer life card for home defense, you might just not mentally be all up, but like be all there. You might have a couple of screws loose, or you might just be plain dumb, honestly. And some people aren't going to like that I'm saying this. I'm sure Trailblazer probably isn't liking that I'm saying this. But if they have a tenth of the integrity a company should have, they will be able to admit to themselves, yeah, this is common sense. It's a single shot 22 LR. And yeah, they do have a 22 Magnum version, but still one round of 22 Magnum. That's not going to do much. It's not really going to do anything. The reload time on it is horrible. So while, yes, as I said before, I don't like the gun. I think it's a pretty bad gun. I mean, I might, I'm probably going to end up buying one just for, just for shits and giggles. Why not? But what I can say, though, is that definitely due to its size, its concealability, it is much, much better as a backup. I have to add that in there. A backup concealed carry gun. Like maybe a backup to your backup, really. Uh, much better is that than a home defense gun. I think we can all agree on that. But if you guys have any problems with this list, comment down below. I want to know why. But with that being said, I think that about wraps it up for this video. Y'all make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that bell. When you hit that bell, hit all in. If you agree with me, because, I mean, the only one I truthfully feel that you might be able to make somewhat of an argument for not agreeing with me on is maybe the Hellcat Pro, but... Once again, I have good reason for why I put it on this list. But whether or not you agree with me, I can say, make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.